Rose and flows of angel hair And ice cream castles in the air And feather canyons everywhere Looked at clouds that way But now they only block the sun They rain and they snow on everyone I got it, Lenny. I understand. No, I'll call Laura myself. Well, nothing's actually changed, right? I mean, this is common. You said so yourself. It's not that unusual, is it? No, no, I'll call her myself. Me? Well, I'm supposed to be here another uh, week. Uh, unless you think, I mean, is that okay? I, should I leave now? No, 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 I understand. Just keeping us appraised. Really? Why is Paisley's grandmother all of a sudden chiming in? No, 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 I don't want you to set that up. Why would I want you to set that up? Because it, it seems like overly official. Like, we will call her. Laura and I will call her together. Yep. Okay. Thanks. We'll be in touch. <laughs> oh, hey, oh. Hey, hey, boo. Oh, wow. You know, I was just going to call you. Oh, mm -hmm. I miss you. No, oh, I miss you too. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was just going to call you. We have six tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. I, I took a picture. Um, oh. I absolutely cannot wait to make some fresh sauce. You know, it, it got really hot and, and you know, the sun just Lenny didn't- called me. He did? Why? Paisley's in the hospital. Uh, why, what, what, what's, what's wrong with her? She, she is, well, it's okay. She when, just- when, has, when did he call you? Today, I just got off the phone. Well, what's wrong with her? I mean, it's early, what, what's wrong? I'm trying to tell you, Lulu, I guess apparently she has some condition, uh, uh, placenta previa. Uh, it's okay. It's precautionary. It, it's just a precaution to make sure. Well, how do you know that? I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did you say she has? Did uh, he explain that to you? Yes. Yes. He explained it to me, sort of, it, well, as best he could. It's not dangerous. It's just, um, uh, she needs bed rest. Well, is it serious? I mean, is it serious what she has? Well, I don't think it's that serious. I mean, we have to find out. I, I, I don't know. How, how long will she stay in the hospital? Did he say, oh, we should call the hospital. Well, she'll stay there until he, he's born, maybe. What? Well, oh, <laughs> that's a long time. She's going to stay in the hospital for three weeks? And, and why didn't he call me? I, I mean, I'm here. I, I'm just sitting here at home, Rachel. Why didn't Lenny call me? Because, Laura. Oh, I mean, why didn't he at least conference call both of us like he always does? Because, Laura, he, he, thought, he thought you might overreact, which you are. Oh, oh, brother. Really? Really? <laughs> I mean, you tell me Paisley is in the hospital carrying our son with uh, whatever you say she has. La -di -da, la -di -da. Laura, why didn't Paisley call us? I mean, she called Lenny, or he called her. What? That that that's odd. She called Lenny. Why? She's having second thoughts. What? Um, no, but 
Oh God, I, I, I just finished. It, it'll, be, oh, God. It, it'll be okay, babe. Now she's probably just anxious. Uh, you know, naturally she'd be feeling a little, you know. Oh, uh, well, uh, we, we talked to her uh, last month. Everything was fine. What happened? Why is she doing this now? What, what did she say to Lenny? Only that her grandmother said something. She told Paisley something. Really? Really? Suddenly her grandmother, who, who screwed up her own daughter and did nothing for Paisley, her entire life is, is interested. I don't in know. Her I don't know. Now, look, let's not jump to conclusions. Now, I don't have any idea what she told Paisley. I'm just telling you what Lenny said. Oh, my God. This doesn't sound good. I mean, we, we've waited so long. Calm oh. down, Lulu, don't oh. panic. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not panicked. I want you to calm down because we are going to call her, you and I. We are gonna call and talk to Paisley together. But she picked us though. We love her, she, she chose us. Yes, she did. So remember that. And Lenny says it's common. Remember, he warned us. He explained sometimes birth moms. No, 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 no. But but she loves us. We love Henry. He's our son. We're part of him. He is not our son. He's not our son, Laura. He's not our son until Paisley signs the papers. I know. I know that part. Why are you telling me that? Of course, I understand that part. She loves him too, Laura. Is this over? You're, you're talking like this is over. You're, you're talking in that d detached business way that you have. No, no, it's not over. I just want you to calm down. See, that's exactly why Lenny called me first. Why? Why is she doing this now, though? I'm it's it's probably because she hasn't been able to see us in person and, and we haven't been able to see her i mean nobody's been able to see anybody and i called her wednesday that's right i i texted her also and, and she didn't get back to me you, i told you remember i said that's odd oh god oh should we go should we fly to pennsylvania <laughs> there's no reason to go we can't go in no one can go in. We can't set foot in that hospital. Look, we're going to call her together. And Laura, Laura, we're going to really need to be calm. Now, I'm scared. You're scared. I get that. But we need to be really calm and let Paisley talk to us. It's not going to help anything if she hears you all freaked out. I know. I'll, I, I will be calm. I can. I know you can. It's just that Henry belongs with us. We're his best place. I know, babe. I'll be right here with you. Okay. But for all we know, it could be nothing. <laughs> we don't have any information. And it's probably all just part of this goddamn fucked up difficult process we're trying to negotiate while being locked up for months. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to call her now. Are you ready? Ready. Are you sure? I'm sure. And we're going to be what? Calm. Okay, I'll text her the link. Love you. Do you want to get a glass of wine or something? No, no. Why would I be drinking wine? Is that going to look good? <laughs> say, Laura, I'm sure Paisley doesn't care if you have a glass of wine. You've had wine in front of Paisley, what, no less than 10 uh, times. No, 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 no. It, it's too early. I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. I just call just just call her please okay okay i'll probably have some wine
grows and flows of angels and ice cream castles in the air and feather canyons everywhere i've looked at clouds that way hi paisley hi how Hello. are you hi hey rachel hi I you <laughs> i know how are you guys what's that where are you rachel uh i'm in a hotel in dallas i'm working oh you're allowed to go out are you being careful you have to be careful rachel yes i'm being very careful there's only three of us on this trip mostly through zoom uh -huh. i'm okay i'm just taking a look at some new medical equipment for the hospital then i'll be heading right home but more importantly how are you we were worried about you oh i'm okay it's just i didn't expect this though well no, of course not oh hold on let, let me get laura on here with us she's missing you <laughs> we both miss you yay yeah, gosh, I miss you guys too. It's just completely lonely here. There's absolutely no one to talk to. Laura, Laura, are you are you there? Hey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, oh here. Paisley. Laura. Oh, hi. hi. You you look rested. Are are you okay? We were worried about yeah, you. I'm okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's just kind of boring, you know. You look pretty, Laura. Did you color your hair or? Oh, well, yeah, you know, having to do it myself now, you know, <laughs> I couldn't stand it anymore. So thanks. Uh, oh, do you think I did a good job? <laughs> you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> That'll save you some money, huh? Yeah. Oh, look at my hair. It's a mess. I'm going to cut my hair. I'm going to cut it. I wonder if I could cut my hair myself. Do you think I could? Well, that might be harder than color. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling? Lenny called us. We were worried about you and the baby. Yeah, why didn't you call us? Oh, I, I forgot. Also, I got sleepy. I, I've been sleeping a lot lately. You forgot? I, <laughs> you're in the hospital, and, and that's something we would want to know right away. We were concerned about you, Paisley. Now, Lenny didn't do a very good job of explaining why you're in the hospital. What do you know about your condition? I don't think it's that serious. They said, don't do very much. I'm like, well, I don't do any much anything anyway, so. Right? Well, how, uh, how is he doing? Are you both comfortable? It's fine, they say, yeah. I mean, I had another ultrasound. They say he's fine. I'm comfortable, but I'm bored, you know? <laughs> I'm bored. They don't yet have visitors, so, which, I mean, I don't know who would visit me anyway, but. Oh, we would visit you. Well, we would fly up there today if they allowed us to be with you. We want to be with you, Paisley. Oh, it must be so difficult there alone. Jared would probably visit. If he could. I called him to tell him I'm here, you know. So he said he would visit if they let people in. And he's decided to be with me when Henry is born, like in the room with me, which is weird since I only asked him like 20 times and every time he was like, oh, hell no. Wait, wait, uh, Jared is going to be in the room while you're giving birth? Well, he says that now, but oh, God, don't worry. He still doesn't want his son. He just said he'd be in the room if I wanted him to be. <sighs> Well, Rachel and I are going to be in the room with you, though, and I'm pretty sure there's a limit. Well, right now, they're not letting anybody in at all. So let's just cross that bridge when we get to it. Now, what did the doctor say about your condition, Paisley? Uh, he said that I have to be on bed rest. I'm not sure why exactly. I might start bleeding more. I was bleeding a lot. I think they don't want me. They don't want me to bleed or anything. You you were bleeding. Is that why you went to the hospital? Yes. Yeah. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Yeah, they use a lot of terms, you know, medical words and stuff. So I can't explain it to you very well. Well, could we talk to the doctor? You know, just to get a better understanding. I guess so. Yeah, she can probably explain it better. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna lay here until he's born, though. 
Do you need anything? Can we send you anything? I'd like to get some makeup. <laughs> Maybe you could send me some makeup. I came in here without anything. I mean, I'm not going to see anyone, but I think Zoom makes you look horrible. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you end up in the hospital? I just went for my regular ultrasound like we agreed I would. And they sent me to the emergency room and then they admitted me. I'm so sorry, Paisley. Were you scared? Kind of, yeah. I want Taco Bell. They deliver now, which is weird. McDonald's delivers now too. Isn't that kind of funny? It used to be just pizza. Hmm. God, I'm dying for good food. The food here sucks. <laughs> well, we'll send you some makeup. Just uh, text a list of what you like. It, that won't be difficult. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I'm not too sure about the Taco Bell though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. That'll just be the first thing I have when I get out. So we'll talk to the doctor then. I'm wondering if they're planning to keep you there on bed rest until the baby's born. He said we'll see. Oh, that's quite a bit of time. Oh, maybe you could stay with us. Uh, yes, Lulu. That is something we can explore together later. <laughs> after we talk to the doctor. Of course, of course, but but that's a long time. I mean, if you only need bed rest, maybe you don't need to be in the hospital for that. You, you could stay with us. Mm -hmm. I don't know though. It... Depending on what the doctor says. Rach, what'd you say? Depending on what the doctor says, Laura. What? No, 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 I, look, it's simple. We can take care of you, Paisley. Uh, I mean, if you and Henry need care these last few weeks, we want to take care of you. I don't think I can fly, I'm pretty sure. <sighs> Henry is good though. He's pretty busy in there. He's gonna be an active little guy. I wish we were there. Oh, I wish we could be with you. I wish I could put my hand on your tummy and, and just feel our little boy moving around in there. It's such a special time. He reminds me that I'm not alone, you know, in here. I have someone to talk to. Oh, <laughs> you're talking to him. Well, that's a, a wonderful thing to do. Uh, say hi from me. <laughs> okay. Hey, little boy. Laura says hi. Hi, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> hi, little guy. Paisley, Lenny called us. Me, Lenny called me. Oh. Yeah, well, you called him, so. I know, I just, I wasn't sure if that was the right thing to do. Well, probably you could have called us. It is fine that you called him. <laughs> Let's just talk about why you called him. I'm sorry, I don't wanna hurt your feelings. It's okay, Paisley. You told Lenny you're having second thoughts. It's a big decision. You're allowed to have second thoughts. Why though? You want what's best for, for him. You said you were so careful when you picked us. Remember that part? Look, there were lots of couples in that book. They all wanted Henry. There was only one picture of two moms. There was one black mom and one white mom. Well, that's perfect, I thought. Yes. <laughs> And you told us, and I hugged you, and you picked us. We know we're the lucky ones. Because you know what it's like to be on the outside. That's what I thought. That's what I really thought, that you know what it's like to be on the outside. Like me, like, like that's where I've been my whole life. And I wanted parents who understood that in case Henry, like, somehow ended up on the outside, too. 
Yeah, I, I understand. I do understand Paisley. And it is such a thoughtful reason, such a insightful and thoughtful reason. But what's going on now, though? Tell us your second thoughts. We want you to. Have you been thinking? Uh, are you worried about your son having two moms? No, that's 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 the beautiful part that he'd have two great moms. I can tell that. Me, I had I had eight moms, and they all sucked. Well, one was okay. Huh. Your road has been rough. That won't be Henry's path. That's why you made this decision, isn't it? Partly. What if you don't like him, though? What? Henry. What if you don't like him? Why wouldn't we like him? We love him already. It's possible, though. No, no, it isn't. We love him. <laughs> we love your baby. <laughs> Our baby, we, we've we waited six years for a baby. Why in God's name? It, it's such a strange question. Of, of course we'll like him. Do you think you could give him back if he was bad or something? Uh, what? No, we're, we're not going to give him back. We're, we're going to like him. What? Oh, God, what the hell? What is going on here, Paisley? It happened to me. I know what happened to me, so it's possible. What happened to you? What happened to you? I was adopted. No, no. Well, you were in foster care. I thought you said. I was later, yes, I was. But first I was adopted. My mom gave birth to me in prison and I was adopted by Susan and Sam. But they didn't like me. How did you know they didn't like you? They gave me back. What? Yes. When I was five. Oh my God. Jesus. And the funny thing is, my mom picked them. A nice man and a woman and a house and a boy and a dog. Are you just remembering this? D do you remember these people? Oh, I remember them. Not well. My grandmother told me last month. Why did your grandmother tell you this? I showed her your picture. And she was like, well, I hope they like him. And I was kind of taken aback, you know? I mean, why wouldn't they like him, I asked. And she said, well, some people just don't like children. And then she told me, and I remembered, I remembered the whole thing. Oh. That's why I hate camp. Susan took me by the hand to the bus and I went to camp. And Susan was crying and I thought she would miss me and I wiped her face. And I remember the skinny lady coming to the kitchen and talking and Susan would try and whisper, she's difficult. She doesn't get ready on time. How is she difficult? She hits the dog. No, I said, you hit the dog. You hit poor Candy. You make her cry out. You hit her with a belt because she pees. I remember that so clearly. And then came the last day of camp. It was a celebration day. And I painted my face. But Susan didn't come. The skinny lady came. Where did you go? The ride was really long. I was I was sleeping in the back seat, leaning over my seat belt, leaning over. And she said, we're here. And she brought this suitcase 
and a new stuffed bear. This is your new house, she said. And then she said hello to this woman that looked like a grandmother. This is your new mother. And I said, can you please go back and get candy? And she didn't. And I, I don't, I don't remember anything about that house until I was in the third grade in another house. So, yeah, it's possible. So, I'm just not sure that I should do this. Give my baby up. Is your grandmother going to help you if you no, decide to do this? No. Is, is, is she going to help you? No, no. I'd never have him there. I would never have him there. And I'm pretty sure that my mother must have gotten on her nerves, don't you think? No, my grandma hates my mom. So no, no, she wouldn't let me. And she'd kick me out just like she did my mother. <laughs> Bitch. This is a terrible, terrible thing that happened to you, Paisley. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's like, I wonder what I did, though. Nothing. You did nothing. Because I didn't hit candy, that's for sure. That's the thing that I, that, that I didn't do, that she said that I did. I did not do that. I probably, I was lazy, probably. That's why. My grandma still says I'm lazy. Don't do this to yourself. You did nothing. I don't know these people, Susan and Sam, and I don't know why they did such a cruel thing to you, but you didn't deserve it. Maybe I was, I was. Nope. No child, no child deserves what happened to you. There's nothing you could ever do. And Henry will never, ever be hurt like that in our care. He might be very difficult. He might. He might have ADHD. Like me. Like you. But he might be hard. We know all this, Paisley. There are no guarantees. Raising Henry will be challenging because that is what parenting is. We want to do this. We're ready to be his moms. We're ready to do the hard part. We love him. We will love him forever and we will never, ever give him back or, or give him up or, or give up on him. You can't promise that. Though. Yes, I can. And I do. I do. We, we do promise. We do. I promise. We, we promise. But you, you have to trust. It's where we are now. You, you have to be willing to, to take a chance on us and, and for it. I'm a little bit tired now. Do you think you can? Paisley, please, do you think you can? Get some rest, Paisley. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay, okay thanks. Um, are you still gonna send me some makeup? Paisley. <laughs> I finished Henry's blanket. Okay, thanks. That's nice of you. Are you still going to send me makeup, though? Of course. Love you. Love you, guys. Bye-bye, Paisley. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Henry. Oh, I'll get on the next plane home.
Wonderful guys. Uh, could I have my cast and playwright, please? Everybody uh, come on back. Um, you guys, that's beautiful. Yes, I'm gonna applaud for everybody out there. And um, uh, just wonderful. Um, so we have um, two ways we can go. This is to the audience. Um, there is a, a Q and A question, a Q and A tab on the bottom of the window. So if you hit that Q and A, you can certainly ask questions, and then I will read them out loud. You could also raise your hands. So if you raise your hands, we will pick you, and you could actually just talk out loud. Um, thank you guys for the wonderful chats that are coming in. Uh, bravos, huge applause, beautiful, fantastic work by all. Um, really, really fantastic. I am. I'm going to start. You know, we're gonna we're gonna talk for about the next 15 or 20 minutes, and. Uh, I'm a little verklempt myself, so. That's, <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, again, wonderful. I, I want to ask. I guess um, Christina will ask you first about the the genesis of this. So I know, uh, and I'll just tell people out in the audience that this was um, part of a, a summer uh, actor studio workshop that we did where it was written very quickly but do you want to go into this a little bit more christina um well yeah it was an exercise that i guess the east coast west coast folks decided um to just maybe get the ball rolling and helping us to stay involved and creative during this really difficult time so it started with a picture that uh we had the writers had to look at and and we we drew these actors names out of out of a bag or out of that out of a hat we didn't know who we were getting we didn't know who they would be and i'm just this is crazy because i got these guys and that was completely random so um i couldn't be happier i i was very nervous to do this exercise and at first i told peter "Ooh, that doesn't sound like that's for me and he reassured me because that's how these guys are so he reassured me and he helped me and then I got you Todd and that just made everything come alive. Hmm. So um, from that exercise, we got here and um, and I'm just really grateful for this opportunity and this whole Zoom theater thing's odd and seems to have taken off and be the way and kept everyone connected. It's very, very beautiful what you've done here, Todd. It's just, and others have done it too, but you do it the best. So it's just really, really outstanding to be able to, I could get very emotional, but to be able to have these connections artistically during this really difficult time. So I'm yeah. quite happy to have met these ladies. I think I'll know them forever. And- um, Likewise. Yeah, yeah, like, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and thank you. And and that's really the whole point of, of smartphone theater is really just to keep everybody connected and working and creating because it's, it means so much to everybody. I'm gonna, um, I, I warned you guys about this question and, and here, this is, it, and it's open to anybody. And that is, is that, you know, be it that we did um, do it over the summer, we did it very quickly and now we're bringing it back. Um, how is it from, from your initial reading to actually mining um, more of a, a sort of a, an emotional life to these and understanding the story a little bit more? How is it that, that you, can you talk about how you guys dug deeper into this and sort of what was the process and, and what, what sort of sat with you from over the summer up until the point now? Anybody? Um, well, I can, uh, I'll start. Um, I, first of all, the piece is so rich and was such a gift to to be able to be a part of of this process with all of the people involved here um so that initial thing was you know the the initial time that we did this was it was so full already but it was so as you mentioned it was so quick so this time around i reached out to Richarda or rachel and to <laughs> to do our, you know, our backstory that, that normally we would get a chance to, you know, improv different things, how they met and, um, you know, a lot of their history, but 
at the very least this time around we got to talk through those things and and really actually pull things from uh, you know at least for me I, I i suggested a couple of things from my own life mm -hmm. that made it that much more um that much more of a connection to the piece got it and speaking of your own life so um kate who plays paisley uh obviously there's a huge connection because when we did this over the summer kate was pregnant and now you are a new mom so can you talk about about that yeah, when I was, well, Christina, bravo, you've written a beautiful play. Thank you. Uh, uh, when Christina asked us about ourselves, just to sort of get like, the juices flowing, and uh, I told her I was pregnant, and that I had just found out that I may or may not go into the hospital for this life-threatening condition uh, for myself and my baby. And I was seven months pregnant at the time, and I ended up going into the hospital, I think two or three days after we went up at the studio and in the Zoom room. Um, wow. and I stayed there for three weeks in the hospital and had my son. Um, so prior to when we did it last time, I had only sort of my imagination working about what it might be like to be in a hospital room alone by yourself during a pandemic. and. Mm. Um, you know, with the baby. On top of it, this this question that I don't know that I ever, ever even considered of would I give my baby up for adoption, which I, I didn't, of course, because I wouldn't. <laughs> but I have such respect, having gone through uh, motherhood for women who do this, I think it's the hardest thing a woman can ever do is to give her baby up. So when I now having gone through the experience of labor and being in the hospital, I now know what that's like. And today working with, I was working with the hospital, this place, and it was bringing up so much emotion for me before I started that it was like so close to me, you know, that I, I, I it was almost hard to uh, fully let that sink in me because I had, I had not, I haven't fully dealt with that experience. Yeah, uh, cause it was so traumatic, but I, I there the through line of understanding what it's like to be there by yourself was really um, present for me and uh, and difficult. Mm. Thank you. And Rashada, I also want to bring up before I get to Rashada, I want to bring this up. Um, both Christina and myself are in L.A. I'm just going around the horn. Um, Kate is in Connecticut. Rashada is in New York. And Heather is in Florida, so sure. this is this is one of the beautiful things about it's our silver lining to our to our situation is that we're able to get this wonderful cast from all over the country, so and and make it work. So this has been really fantastic. Um, so Rashada, from the from the summer up until now, um, I, you know I think I think Rachel. Uh, I love Rachel, and uh, and I and I love the fact that she she sort of has this strong backbone. Mm -hmm. But what you did today, which I loved, is that you also showed the cracks in that backbone, yeah. um, which was which was really fantastic. So you want to talk about that a bit? Well, um, yeah. Um, starting where we started, I mean, we're very lucky that we are all in the actor's studio and that they did provide us this forum to meet each other because we never would have met unless we went to LA and you know you came to New York and then Heather moved to Florida so you know. <laughs> um, but um, I think that um, at this time uh, to be able to do this work together and to achieve what we achieved at the first time because it was like okay this is it this is the, this is the subject this is the picture these are the this is the, and then do it do it do it and we're done and then we do it this time and then we were at the beginning of this pandemic this time we've been in it for a while we understand what it means to be in the pandemic and we were able to like heather said when we i focus more the first time on you know okay i'm a, I, I buy medical things okay so and i'm thinking about all the things that cuomo is giving to new york okay i, I need that i'm buying and i'm looking at these things you know doing your research this time i had that and then focusing on our relationship 
right? So when Heather did call me, that was great for us to talk. Because I mean, we, we're like sisters, you know, Kate, Heather and I, we were like sisters. Kate came a little later, you know, to the studio and Heather left before she came, but we're like sisters. So to reconnect and then go deeper into other things to achieve whatever this relationship is, this wonderful relationship that uh, Laura and Rachel have and what it means for this woman Paisley, she can turn on a dime. Those were the things that I was focused on this time. The fact of how much power this young girl has, it's like, and what it will do to us, right. you know? So that that's where my mind was. And yes, you know, Rachel's the strong one, but Rachel also has other things And that. It was interesting, you know, I surprised myself what happened today. <laughs> <laughs> good. You know, so, you know, that's but, um, very nice. yeah, thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. But, you know, that, that, that's what was important, the relationship this time around. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and the thing is that, you know, we keep digging. We're not, we're not finished. We keep digging, trying to uncover things because you're right. never really finished, you know? Right. So we, right. we discovered some things. So this was great. We, you know, what they say, a great rehearsal. That's what they say, right? You know, <laughs> performance, we're in performance, but, you know, it's, um, it was just lovely. So. Thank yeah. you, and thank you, Christina, for writing such a wonderful piece. You know, and thank you, Todd, for your direction. Your your oh. your, your director's hand is so just so warm and gentle. It's lovely. So thank, thank you. you. It's, it's thank you to my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a pleasure. Um, Dave Field, come on in. You have a question. Hi, Christina. I loved it. Thank for, you for, for you for for you other three guys. You may not know this, but in our normal actor studio presentations, which took place before all the Corona surprise, Christina would give her commentary usually, and she always gives great commentary, very persuasive and incisive and, and, and perceptive. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't surprise me that she, she enjoyed working with you guys, because I think this is the most collaborative piece I've seen. It, uh, I've seen other stuff that I've liked, but this this had something something different, and I couldn't nail it as I was watching it. Gee, it sounds kind of autobiographical, but it wasn't. And yet it was. It was because because the personal histories came from the actors, and and so I would like to ask Christina, uh, did you feel you gave up anything when you had, when you you had to, you had to work with these people, and you work with their input in terms of the writing, not just you know the total aspect of the theater? Well, the exercise as it was explained to me by Peter was after we drew the actors' names out of a bag and had a photo that we looked at, we were to spend time with each one of them because we're not only, we are in different states, but we could be in the same state and I might not know these girls well. So, um, and because I had nothing to write about. So once I got, once I got to know them and, and Kate's particular medical situation, I had a different idea going in before I got my actors and I completely threw it out the window. I had nothing to do with adoption or any of it. So once I got them, I, I was like, oh, my other idea is not gonna work. But somehow it just felt so magnificent. I don't know, it just felt like these ladies, this is the piece for these ladies. And this girl is pregnant and, um, and I believe in what the play is saying also, you know, with the same sex marriage here and the interracial marriage here. And I thought it gave me a wonderful opportunity to say those things um, and what will happen in the second act. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, but I felt all of that was, it was like, oh, this, I'm supposed to write this right now. So I didn't feel I gave up anything. I felt like they gave me things. I never heard of what Kate had. So after she told me what she had, I looked it up. And, um, and she was going to be pregnant in the Zoom. So, so unless it was a very tight close up, I figured we're going to have to deal with this. So, and I, I'm glad I couldn't, I couldn't be more, more thankful. And I think it's very interesting when you think of all these children that are having to do this all day, every day, how connected we can actually become looking at four squares on a screen. It's, we, we see now that it's possible. People are even more comfortable with it. So, um, so that I didn't feel like I gave up anything. I felt like I just got stuff. Well, you did. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Um, there is a so Paul has a question, Paul Coates, and that says, "What was the photo in inspiration?" So over the summer, there was a photo that was part of our exercise. Do you remember what the photo inspiration was? It was a dog sitting by itself in front of a train. Ah, 
Got it. Everyone had different pictures, but that was mine. Very nice. How did it hit you? I mean, it, what what was it about that image that that do you remember? It didn't hit me at all. And Peter said, that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what, a dog and a drain? Um, so but it's interesting. He said, and that freaked me out. So he said, no, you don't have to don't have to focus. It's just if it sparks something, go ahead. But as we went down the in the writing process, and I realized the many things that children leave behind when they're in these circumstances, one of the things they leave behind is their animals. So, um, so when she was accused of abusing that animal, I felt like that dog would, then did speak to me. And, um, and she asked for it when she went to the next house. So initially, I've just said, leave it alone. Maybe it'll come to me. And, um, and, and, and it did. Hmm. That, that very powerful. Uh, I'm going, if anybody else has any more questions, please raise your hand. I'm just gonna read um, a couple of the comments. You've all brought such amazing resources to this ensemble. I finally see what this new medium can, can nurture. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the deeply moving work, beautifully written, gently directed, and so relevant. The first one was from Sharon Gold. Hello, Sharon. And the second one's from Herb Mendelssohn. Hi, Herb. And, um, this is the first time in a long, this comes from Judith Binus. Um, this is the first time in a long time that I've been sorry that the play was over. Thank you. My response was actually said out loud. What? It's over? No. That's <laughs> great. Um, I would love to see a second act. And um, yeah, so I, I think Christina's already brought it up that she is contemplating her second act. Mm -hmm. So um, that's great. And was it my friends that are on here? I, I didn't say this to anybody that I invited. But if you can go to the tip jar, this wouldn't be happening without Todd. It's a lot of work that he does. I don't know when this guy sleeps, because he does it for everybody, not just us. So if you can go to the tip jar, and you're able to do that right now, I think you I, I would really like that. Oh, thanks, Christina. A um, lot of great jobs. Uh, this comes from Richard Lucas. Richard's been writing a lot. So I want to share Christina is a great writer, always goes for the emotional jugular, hard situations, tough calls. This was a great experience. And I loved how kind of impossible the dilemma is. There's no possible answer to what the child's future holds, but it's so understandable to want to somehow seek out that knowledge, sort of a guarantee which life does not offer. Yeah, there's, um, I mean, who knows what the happy ending is? I mean, for any of us, quite, quite honestly. Yeah, um, thanks Richard. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, does anybody else, uh, anybody on the cast, Christina, do you want to do you want to share before we call it a day? I'm good. Thank you, everybody, for taking the hour to be with us. All right. Likewise. Thank you all so, so much. So to Christina and the cast. Um, oh, wait a minute. Oh, my Lord. This is my mother. This is the first oh. one. Let's see. Here's the big deal. Let's see if she can unmute herself. Let's see. I'm, I'm oh, she has unmuted herself. Mom, is that you? Yes, it is. It was a beautiful oh. show. And it got me crying like it always does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. I'm, I'm glad you're here and then figured out the chat too, which is wonderful. Do you have any questions? We're all wonderful. Do, do you have thank any questions? Or, thank you. No, we all, we enjoyed it very much. Oh, that's great. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you for chiming in too. And, and we'll talk later, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, to, oh, let's see, Lisa Richards. Let's go to Lisa Richards really quick. So Lisa, go ahead. I wanna talk, you all were wonderful. Hi, Rashada, really wonderful. Christina, I, I have to applaud you for your listening to the people that was so amazing that you got your story you jumped in the swimming pool from a high diving board i mean it was really not an easy task and um sometimes the best things come from that you know you just go with it and and um that i think that's where your talent shows through that you were able to just take the leap and listen and say, okay, <laughs> just go with this. And that was really, even the dog, I, I, that was just wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. 
Right. And uh, Peter Flood. Hey, uh, hello, everybody. Great to see everybody again. These guys are wonderful. Uh, Todd, can you see this? I cannot. No, we can't see you. I can only hear you. Uh oh. oh well, here's the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you can't. You can't show it. I can you show my for my screen. I no, I can't. Well, let, so let me screen yeah. share. Um, no. You would have to screen share yourself, and I. How do I do that? I don't know if I've turned that on. Honestly, the, the green thing at the bottom says share screen. Yeah, but you're uh, here. I'm, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to promote you to a panelist. Hang on one second. Okay, hang on. So you're going to join us, Peter. Hi, Peter. Did you like the music in the very beginning under the credits? So, Peter, you have to unmute. Hey, let me see if he's here yet. Peter, Peter, Peter. Uh, I don't know what happened. We're gonna give it. We're gonna give it like twenty seconds and see what and see what happens, and we'll, well just anyway, keep on talking. Anyway, suggested all of that. Oh, okay, so oh, I got it. Oh, you can hear yep. me now. We can hear you. Yeah. Oh, there we go. All right. There's your dog. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Very nice. well, the dog loved it. All right, excellent. Anyway, right. love you guys, and uh, right. it's great. It's great to see everybody again. Thank you. Likewise, Thank you, Peter. Thank likewise. You. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Okay, so if there aren't any other, oh wait a minute, Matt Chait has a question. Hi, Matt. I'm glad you're hey, here. Matt. Oh, he can. Yes, you can in a second. So, Matt, just unmute yourself. There, there I am. You you're on. Uh, yeah, no question. Uh, it, it was fabulous. I mean, it, it was really uh, a level of intimacy on Zoom that, that I hadn't seen before. But the, what, what, <clears throat> what got my hand raise, raised was that photo of that dog uh, was <laughs> by a very, very good friend of mine it was <laughs> a, a long time ago. Wow. Uh, yeah, so th that was kind of astounding. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, congratulations to all of you, Christina. It was absolutely lovely. Absolutely Thanks. lovely. Yeah. Hi, Matt. Miss you. Miss Thank you. you Matt. Thanks, Matt. And uh, we're going to Mitch Levine. So, Mitch, hang on. There you go. You know, theater is alchemy and you guys found that magic i was so extraordinarily moved christina mm. your your gift is enormous and your heart is enormous and that was just so such a profound undertaking and to bring this together todd in the way you have with this extraordinary cast, with these extraordinary actors, it it truly is alchemy. I am I am Thank I you. am I feel rewarded for our, for our collective belief in the theater having watched this tonight. So thank you guys. It's beautiful. Uh, thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you're you. you're thank welcome. You. I, I miss seeing you in person. Um, thank you. Likewise. And uh, to to the three of you. Uh, wonderful actors uh you know your your commitment to this your emotional commitment to it is what was was just so profound and um astounding that um i felt i just needed to share so thank you all thank you mitch very very much yeah that means a, an enormous amount so thank you um all right um, I'm, I'm sort of speechless after tonight. So, um, so you guys, I am going to send you a quick link just as a, just a final wrap up. So, so look at your email in about two minutes and to our audience. Uh, thank you guys. Um, as always, thank you all very, very much next week. In fact, we have a piece that's directed by Mitch Levine, who was our last voice on. So, uh, so I hope you come back and join us and until then have a wonderful, very safe week and um be well okay thanks bye, everybody thanks. thank you all bye bye